Nepal is very vulnerable to climate change because of its geographical features. So it is highly impacting on the lives of people here. We can feel the rise in temperature and natural disaster occurring like floods and uh, landslides. And on the other hand, we are seeing changes in disease pattern in our country. Diarrheal disease is one of the public health problems in Nepal. For one degree centigrade increase in ambient temperature, there is increase of diarrheal incident by 4.4%. And such strain is much higher in the mountain region up to 9%. What happens is increasing temperature promotes bacterial growth, whereas increases in extreme precipitation enhances the spread of these bacterial pathogens in the environment. This is particularly relevant in resource-limited settings like Nepal, where people still practice open defecation and lack access to clean drinking water. So what happens is these bacterial pathogens that are in the fecal matter get spread into the unprotected drinking water sources, such as rivers, lakes, and streams. People drink those contaminated water, and they end up sick with diarrhea. The poorest communities are the ones that suffer from these big outbreaks of the diseases. They have poor access to healthcare. So it has a huge and disproportionate impact. The town of Julikhel is a small town with about 15,000 population. Julikhel is also very famous for its water supply system. Uh, 25 years ago, this place used to have the only portable drinking water supply system in Nepal. This whole water supply system was entirely managed by the local community. But over the course of years, Due to the growing population, the water got contaminated and now we can no longer use water like the way we used to do before. In Nepal, over the years, we have improved the water quality in terms of coverage, but we could not ensure the quality of water. The water we drink is Contaminated. Even in the Kathmandu Valley, like more than 70% water sources are contaminated. हमने झाड़ा पाखला हमरो गांव टोल में बचा ले झाड़ा पाखला को ने हमने आम आदले ची हमने जानकारी करूं जा हमरो खबर करूं जा अन्य हमी हमरो साथ में जीवन जल साथ में जिंग जकी हमी साथ में ले रह जान सों रावायर को बच्चा लक्की है कौस्तो कंडीशन सा जस्तो नॉर्मल बाखर शुरू बाको ज़्यादा पहल लगना लाई बने देहिन अब घरे लो उपचार संबंधी अब जीवन जल बना रखो नी झोली लो कुरा रखो नी रा बच्चा ले दिशा घरे नी पटक जीवन जल बना रखो नू मनेरे जीवन जल दिए रा हमी वायर ले साल साल दिए रे जिंग जिंग चक की दिए Community health volunteers are in charge of village, you know, certain number of households within that village, and they are the primary health contact for all those people in that community. They just get basic training. Some of them don't even have a high school graduation, but they have the trust of the community. It's like one of the most successful model in the world is right here in Nepal. We are at Sanskriti Farms and Research Centre. We work with several organisations, local communities and farmers in the projects related to food, energy and water nexus. At our farm and nursery, we are testing and doing trials with uh, several varieties of fruits that do well in the middles, like peach, pear, apples and many others. So we propagate the trees when they are successfully tested. In our neighboring communities and our communities, there are a few 
cases which have serious issues with diarrheal and other diseases related to the water. This place is water scarce area uh, because we reside in the hill, uh, we don't have water. We have to walk downhill to, to get the water. So we have been building the rainwater harvesting ponds to collect the rainwater and use it during the dry season. People mostly rely on the rainwater to feed their animals, so the water resources are less stressed. This tap name is called Falate. This has been uh, the dominant water source in this area because it feeds more than 100 families directly. This is an ancient tap. You can just see this uh, statue. So this was carved and uh, my grandfathers and the big grandfathers also had the same like stone tap. So this is not new, this is all the old taps. This is the water source for this tap. So it's between these two trees. And you can just see like uh, we have farms up there and uh, people use the compost manure into their farms. They might use uh, some chemical fertilizers. So during the rainy season, it flows from up uh, into this and uh, it, it flows through, through the tap as well. What we are trying to do is develop early warning system that gives warning good one to three months ahead of time to help communities adapt to the threats of climate change. So we take the historical disease data and we combine them with precipitation data, temperature data, and other you know, environmental variables and figure out how those are related to diarrheal disease. Then we take the climate forecast and then we use artificial intelligence to figure out what the burden of diarrheal disease is going to be like 30 days from now, 60 days from now, 90 days from now, and compare those predicted estimate of disease to the historical norm, right? So then we create a color-coded map. So the red represents area that we expect the risk to be higher. Uh, than normal. The green represents area that we expect it to be lower than normal. Right now it goes up to January of 2024. We are not talking about what's going to happen tomorrow or next week. It's really hard to mobilize public health resources within such a short period of time. But if we have months, that is, uh, allows ample time to, for example, reallocation of resources, figuring out where areas that you should you know, prioritize for rotavirus vaccination. The impact of climate change is real. And uh, as health professionals working in countries like Nepal, we are seeing it and its impact uh, every day in our lives. Climate change is here. It's making people sick. It's killing people now, not 50 years from now, but at present. And what the IPCC report suggests is that even if we are extremely successful in our mitigation effort, which is not looking like it at all, the extreme weather events that we are seeing right now is not going to go away in the foreseeable future because of the changes that have already taken place. So that poses a fundamental question. How are we going to adapt to this new set of hazards as a society? If 
we start working rigorously around it. Now, this is not an insurmountable challenge. We have to come together, the world as one community, to help address this. Thank you.